Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman, and this is Intermediate ASP.NET Core 1.0. And I'm Jeff Fritz, helping Scott with Intermediate ASP.NET Core 1.0. Uh, together, we are learning how to do this along with you. Uh, we're both longtime ASP.NET developers, but haven't spent as much time with Core, so we're learning how all this stuff works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So in this segment, we're going to talk about web APIs. And briefly, it's important to point out that in the past, we've said ASP.NET MVC, mm -hmm. and that's been a box. Yeah. And then we said ASP.NET Web API, and that was another box. Yeah, and, and they they functioned a little bit differently, but they had some of the same named objects in there. It was always confusing to me when I was building a controller. Well, is it a MVC controller or is it an API controller? Mm -hmm. And I think we've come to a, a good solution on these things. We now. have. In the past, there was der der deriving from controller, or deriving, oh, yeah. as you said, from API controller. They had objects that were named the same. Uh, now, it's completely unified. So that's one of the yeah. great benefits of ASP.NET Core is that a controller is a controller. Mm -hmm. And you can also have controllerless controllers. So you can have a controller that yeah. has no base class. So yeah. some funky stuff that you can do. So let's see how easily and quickly we can go and do a controller that's going to return JSON or XML or something like that. So we're doing a UI-less uh, yeah. controller. Yeah, an HTTP endpoint. Right. Now, we're going to keep using the same application that we've been using before. It's the do-nothing application. Uh, right now, it's just kind of goofing around. And you'll notice here, like, for example, Scott controller, you know, just returns some some junk. There's nothing particularly interesting here. All we did was we said use MVC, mm -hmm. all right? And up here we said add MVC. But I remember when we said services dot add MVC, there were two options here. What's yeah. going on there? So this is interesting, right? We've got add MVC and MVC core, right? Mm -hmm. These two methods. MVC core, right, it's just those essential MVC services to get things up and running, like routing, mm -hmm. right? The, or the information to know how to work with the controllers. So very specific, just the minimal things. You don't get Razor capabilities okay. when, you, when you do add MVC core, right? So this doesn't give you the view aspect. It gives you formatters. Right. So you can make JSON or XML, but it doesn't give you... Uh, the razor. Actually, we need to add formatters also. So those are separate as well. So those it really is essential. Yeah. It is a little bit confusing, I have to say, though. I'm not a huge fan of having it have the word core at the end because ASP.NET core and then add MVC core, it implies, I think, that MVC core is a thing or a product. True. What this really means is add the essential MVC stuff but not razor but it turns out that that method name was too long. Yeah, I suppose that's a little wordy. But that is essentially what it's trying to sure. say when we say add MVC core. So I'm going to keep it with add MVC, but we do want to point out that services.add MVC core does not include Razor. When I was doing the introductory uh, MVA with Maria, I said most people really don't need to do MVC core unless they're really trying to be efficient. Do you think that was a fair statement? Um, it's, it's fair to, to an extent. Um, if they're trying to be efficient, if they're really trying to build that slimmed down system where you want to get the framework out of the way mm. and be able to delegate more processing to your business, your business process and logic, right? Because you, you've stripped everything else away except for controllers and... Um, and routing. So if you're making, uh, as we hear the buzzword, microservice, a yeah. small web API, yeah. it would be appropriate to uh, just yeah. use add MVC core. Yep. But for the be beginner making a web page, they'll just use add MVC. Yep. Okay. Yep. And when we do that, again, we say add MVC, we're, we're, it's, in, it's confusing because there, the, a, we are using ASP.NET Core. Yeah. Okay. There is not a thing called ASP.NET Core MVC. That's not a product name. That's not a thing. There's not an ASP.NET Core Web API. You know, it's kind of confusing. It's marketing stuff, but the point is Core has it all. It mm -hmm. has MVC. It has Razor. It has Web API. Everything's all integrated. So when we say add MVC, what we're really getting, again, they, don't, they never use my name stuff. They have add Rousing and Raider, Razor and good stuff. Yeah, naming's hard. No, it isn't really. If they would just do it my way... I think things would be better for everyone. But 
They don't listen to us. They just uh, put us in a room in here. All right, let's do some uh, some web APIs. All right, let's some, do it. Some products. So I'm going to go and say add new folder, and we'll make models. Remember, we made services, we made middleware. Now it's time for models, and we'll have a uh, a product because. That's generic. Could be a blog, could be a whatever makes us happy. And I got to say, an, I need an, an int ID and I need a string name, but I'm going to use snippets, prop tab, tab, ID, space, space, tab, tab, prop tab, tab, string, tab, string, tab, boom, boom. Ah. Isn't that cool? There's that 100 words a minute type of Yeah. Yeah. I can only do that once a day. I'm like Usain Bolt. I'm allowed to sprint once and then I rest for four years. Mm, okay. So you'll never see that again. And if I tried it again, I would I'd be unable to uh, to pull that off. We'll see that in the <laughs> in the next and, ASP.NET Core version of these uh, videos. And, and if I ever meet people or they tweet us about this, they're going to say that that was done in post production. No was, way. It was all an editing there, trick. It, there was no video tricks there at all. <laughs> no hey, editors. Please don't speed up that video. Actually, that'd be cool if they did. Builds the legend. Uh, let's make a products controller. All right. We got a products controller here, and we saw that routing can be centralized, or yeah. it can be used with attribute routing. And it seems largely people prefer attribute routing. See, I, I think this is interesting because I I'm from that school of thought that I want all of my routing in one place mm -hmm. in that startup class, so that I I can go and find all of my routing. I, I don't have to go search for it everywhere. It's in one place. Right. But I totally understand wanting to be able to have that ability to do an override right where that route is being answered. Yeah. Makes sense to me, but I, I like doing it the other way. Well, let's talk about both ways. So let's go and just say public string, and I'm going to say get. I'm actually naming the method get. Previously, we've done things like index, but I'm going to call it get, okay? And we'll say... Uh, that 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 returns, oops, hello world, okay. So we've got a products controller that has a get, and that's it. How would that get called in your world? It would be done with the default route. Yep. We would pass in slash products. Oh yeah. Would we have to say slash get? I don't know. So we should go find out. Mm. Yeah, you don't know, do you? You're wondering yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You've got me. I don't know. Let's find out. That's so, why it's, it's, so we've named it get because that's the HTTP action name. Yeah. So, so naming it get didn't buy us anything, though. Right? No. Yeah. So let's go back and let's add some attribute routes. All right. We'll go in here and we'll say... Oh, wait. You're on Scott's controller there. Oh, pardon me. See? Good catch. Totally meant to do that. Let's go in here and we will say route slash API slash square brace, not curly brace, not intuitive. All right. And then, where is it? The squiggly on the route. Yep. Wants to know what to do. We got to add in our MVC namespace. Now, what does that square controller thing do? That is saying that this route here is going to be slash API slash, and then controller is going to be this part here, the part of the class name minus the word controller. Okay. So we're in, we could have gone like this, products. Right. But then we've got the word products twice here. We just have it. We just have controller. Sure. Okay. So that that does the similar type of thing where by convention it's just going right. to extract the name. So if the as name I understand changes, it, it's a as I understand it is a template. Cool. Okay. And we can have more sophisticated attribute routing templates as well. Now here gets interesting. Look at that. Uh, there's all my HTTP action verbs. Right. Here's all your verbs. So this is where we see a nice integration between MVC of old and Web API. They are the same thing now. But also worth pointing out that I didn't derive from controller here. This is a controllerless controller. So maybe that's... No, I think it'll be okay. Okay, go ahead. So let's say get. So we're going to say we want this to be called on get. I bet you I could call that Fred and it would still work. But we'll try this and we'll see. It's important to test those assumptions. Sure. So as folks are learning, they should try to test those assumptions themselves. Okay, let's go and look at products. 
All right. So that's not doing anything. So let's find out why. It says slash products. What does our route say? Slash API slash yeah. products. There you go. See? There we go. All nice. right. Makes sense. All right. So that is a controllerless controller. Now, you returned a string there, but I see that appearing in the browser. Is that a text file that was returned, or is that HTML? That is a great question. So again, with browsers, whether it be Chrome in this case, or Edge that we've used as well, if we go and do that again, let's see what it came back as. I can click on that and look at the headers. So text plain. Text plain. That came back as plain because and, I didn't say otherwise. Right, and you didn't pro provide any formatting. And when you looked at the response, I saw it was just the characters. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is. We downloaded a text file. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked about this in the beginning. If you check out the intermediate, uh, the uh, beginner ASP.NET Core, we had a really interesting chat about by saying string there, we were implying an I action result. Mm -hmm. of which there are many types, yeah. of which one of the types is content result. So it right, is I remember that. String is effectively a content. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a freebie. Interesting and useful, but we want some JSON. Okay? Yeah. So let's go into our references and manage NuGet packages. And we're going to want to use, as you said before, a formatter. Okay? Uh, what is a formatter, and how is it different than like a serializer? Because you said the JSON doesn't come by default. Well, it doesn't come by, by default when you include MVC core. We've included MVC in this project. Mm -hmm. Do I get JSON for free? So I, I already believe, have this. You know what? Let's can we take a look at our references and expand the MVC? Let's do that. Reference there. You can so right in Solution Explorer, we can expand our packages here and see what's referenced. Oh, look at that! Check it out. So we already have the thing that we need. So then, to your point. We might not necessarily have gotten that if we had just asked for MVC core. So you can right. see that this uh, ASP.NET Core.MVC package has this dependency on this core fundamental package. Yep. But we already have. So here's all the things that came along, localization and Razor and tag helpers. To your point, the things that you don't necessarily need. Right. If you're not doing web pages. If you're doing just an HTTP endpoint with a web API. All right. So then that means we already have a JSON formatter, and that's the thing that knows how to take an object and turn it into, uh, into JSON, which is a JavaScript flavor. And because we did add MVC inside of our startup class. Uh -huh. I'm going to declare tab bankruptcy. Oh, that's a good idea. Because a lot was going on there, and it was freaking me out. And I'm going to go in here. There, we, there go. we go. Right, so we were talking about the difference between saying add MVC and add MVC core. Mm -hmm. Because we did add MVC, all those features that we saw oh. are already lit up. If okay. we did add MVC core. Get rid of that. Go here. Hit dot. And look at that. Yeah, now, now we need to So you have up. to ask for stuff. Yeah, you do. Interesting. So then I would go and say add JSON formatters dot add Dot mm -hmm. add, dot add, dot add. So in that case, bare bones cafeteria plan, I just want this, or the just give me an all you can eat platter, and I'll do that one. Absolutely. All right, that's good information. All right, so let's go back over to product, uh, product controller. I hit control comma to do that. And we're going to go and take products controller, and I'm going to, I am going to derive from a base class just to make that a little bit easier. And we're going to give it some uh, some products. Remember those products that we made before. So we're just going to have a fake fake database here. I apologize for our fake database. Um, it is what it is. It is a list of products. And we're going to go and make that new list of products. And one of the things that you can do that's kind of nice when you make a list of products is you can go like this. Oops. You can say open. Oh, wrong way. There you go. Open, and there you go. All right. And we're going to say, into the constructor, I want a new array of, and then we can make a bunch of new products. Okay? So this is going to be an array of products. So we're going to say new product, and again, of course, we can instantiate them like this. And we'll say name equals, you know, computer, and then comma. All right? And then we'll take that whole thing and we'll make a couple of products. 
Huh? How classy was that? That nice? Did I do a horrible job on that? Watch that. Look at that. Uh -huh. I was going to say. I the, fixed it. Saved it at the last minute. I could even do this with. Look at this. You ever done that? Isn't that the coolest? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the Emacs people don't think it's cool, but I do. That's good. I, I, I want to know what the VI folks like about that. Yeah, it, it's one of those. That was holding down Alt in order to do that. To do the vertical square select. Yeah, vertical select, and then if I wanted to take, like for example, oops, if I wanted to take name, uh, do that. Yeah. It's good. All right, so there is our products. We'll get rid of that final comment right there. There's our poor person's database, okay? And then we're going to change get, because right now we're turning a string. We're going to return some I enumerable of product. You read that, of course, as of, mm -hmm. just like you would say cup of tea. Yeah. Like that, okay? So we're going to have that uh, return that list of products. All right, there's our little database there. Okay, let's see if that does anything. Control F5. I'm telling you, Control F5 is where it's at. You should try it. You like the debug? I do, I like the debug. Yeah? Let's go and say slash API slash products. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Now, do you have a plugin or something I installed? I do have a plugin. I'm sorry that you noticed that. Oh. See how there's that flash right there? I've got a little plugin that's launched called JSON View. I was going to say, because when I view it's JSON, nice, it, it doesn't look that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is JSON View. Uh, it is a little plugin that just makes it colorful. You can see for a moment there that there's a flash. Yeah. And then it makes it pretty. And what it gives you is that experience. So it's worth checking out. Every browser is going to be different. If I go and bring this over into Edge, for example, I'm going to get it looking like that. And then I want to open up F12 tools. One of the other things that I like to use, other than a browser, if you're going to spend a lot of time doing web APIs, is a thing called Postman. There's also, what's the one you use? Fiddler? Fiddler. Mm -hmm. Yep. Telerix Fiddler. So Postman lets me go and do things like this. I could say it's a git, it's a whatever, and then all these There's ver verbs, again. verbs that I never use, like unlink and purge. Uh, usually I use git and post, and I'll say send. You can also do send and download. It's mm. a great little tool. Let's you do basic auth and things like that. And then we can see each of these things formatted certain ways. You see if I format it as JSON, it looks great. That was what was the raw Yeah, that's what value, we sent. Right? That's the raw value, and that's the pretty, the pretty print. Okay? So that looks great. That turned out nicely, but what's significant about that, isn't it, is that we took a list of products, it turned into a I enumerable of products because we only want to go forward over it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But did you notice that there's no view there, right? No, there isn't. So what's we're, going on? Right, so we're returning that model directly, mm -hmm. and it's generating that I action result for us that wraps that model that's being returned and turns it into, with that JSON formatting, mm -hmm. JSON. Yeah, that uh, it sees that an I enumerable of product comes back, it knows how to format it as JSON, and notice this though, I didn't see the word JSON or JSON appear anywhere in this as well. It gets about single responsibility principle. Yeah, right? right. Formatting lives somewhere else. We're concerned only about our business logic to make our controller work. Right. Our job is to return products controllers. In this case, not to think, if we can avoid it, about uh, JSON or whatever. Right. And if you think about it, to make the comparison to MVC, we're not putting the formatting in JSON here. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we have razor views to do the formatting. Right when we do an MVC controller. So let's make a, an, uh, an API that returns just a product. And we'll say that it takes an int ID. We talked a little bit early on about um, model binding and how that's going to come out of the URL. Yep. Okay. 
and uh, we're gonna say return, and we're gonna take our little products database, and we're gonna say, just give us a single, uh, a single item, sometimes with link you say single or default. We're gonna go and give us something and compare each of those things against ID. You need your my, Anders. I forgot my Anders operator there. One day, he'll know that I call it that, and then he'll uh, either call me angrily, or we'll be friends and we'll hang out together. Go for tacos. Yeah, we'll go for tacos. So then I'm gonna say HTTP get again, but we have two things called get now. We've got an overload. Yeah. Get and get, right? Here then, I need to say, hey, get, look for something called ID, all right? That is gonna map the HTTP ID to the ID on the uh, property there. So I should be able to go to slash pro project slash one or slash two. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that works. And get that specific product returned. That is the goal. Let us find out if it's true. So even though I'm gonna be launching uh, my browser here, also useful to know that you can control what gets launched. So if you wanted to put in your Fiddler or your Postman or whatever as a, as a browser mm -hmm. that you would launch, you can totally do that as well, okay? So we said slash API slash products, right? We'll just say uh, slash products slash one. And there we go. Look at that, a little database search there. That's our details view. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh -huh. good, yeah. All right. So then, Ship here's it. a question. Well, almost there. Okay. Because this is a web API, we want to try to f follow some certain rules, right? The, the idea of being RESTful. Yes. Right? Representational state transfer. You can go and look up the original uh, PhD thesis about it. But the general idea is this. This is how I think of RESTful, and you tell me okay. if I'm right. That uh, these objects are resources. If I want a GIF, I do an HTTP GET. I get the resource. The resource is the GIF. It says content type GIF, and then the GIF is returned. If I then asked for it and it wasn't there, I should get an appropriate status code yes. that represents reality. Yep, but if, but then there's this whole other concept about resource types, right? Mm -hmm. So if I, want, if I request that product and I say, I'd like that as a GIF, then... Oh, oh my gosh, you can say GIF. <laughs> then I'll get an image of that product that I requested. That's a really great but point. But if I requested it and I said my content type is JSON, mm -hmm then I'll receive the JSON data about that same product. That is a really interesting point. So I say slash API slash products slash one. Yep. And I say, I only accept GIFs, then a picture would come back. Sure. And if I only accept XML, so yep. that's a, there's a content negotiation there. Yes. Interesting. But once again, it's not part of our code that we're writing in the controller. Right. So we have to do a little bit of that ourselves. So here, we'll go and grab that product. So instead of saying return, I'm gonna say var. Mm. Okay, var product equals product. So we're gonna just squirrel that away for just a second because there's only five products in our database right now. And we're gonna say if product is null, do something. Otherwise, do something else. Well, before it was fine, we could return the, the product. But what we really wanna do is we wanna say HTTP 200, okay. Yeah, right, let the, our, our requesting clients know that, hey, we did something right here. Mm -hmm. Now, remember when we changed our controllerless controller or our POCO controller to inherit from controller base? Yeah. That includes this really convenient and fun OK. So I can go and say, makes an OK object result. <laughs> Someone told me that OK uh, was a misspelling of all correct. And I, there was a president, I think it was Roosevelt or somebody, who would go and say, okay, okay, and he was mm. intending to say, all correct, all correct. Don't know if that's true or not. So we say, okay, uh, product, but then this product here is no longer what we're returning. What we're really returning is an I action result. Yeah. Okay? So then, if we didn't find it, what's not found? We gotta return that 404. Right, so do I return 404? No, there's actually a not found. So you found the not found method. I did. Okay. Thank you for that. Isn't that great? So now I would hope to visit this again and visit a, uh, a resource that does not exist and then get back a 404. I'll 
do it from Postman because it's Postmandier, it's better. Let's zoom in on that. We saw before, five worked, 66. Hmm. 404. Not found. Not cool. found. And no content appropriately. Exactly. Worked exactly as it should. All right. So that's pretty cool. Those are just gets, though. We need to add a post and do something a little more sophisticated. Yeah, we want to we want to fill out a little bit of that crud set mm. of operations that we discussed earlier. Good point. Let's talk about crud for a second. Crud, that is, create, read, update, delete. If we go and split those up, create and read, update and delete, create. Let's do read. We did read before. That was a get. Read is a get. Figured that one out, right? Yep. Create. Create is a post. Typically a post, and then an update is a put. Yep. And then a delete is a delete. That's kind of the mapping that we've all kind of agreed upon. Uh, to the HTTP verbs. Amongst, pardon me, amongst HTTP verbs. Exactly, HTTP verbs. And uh, there are, or there have been in the past, some firewalls, rarely, but it happens, that don't like puts, don't like deletes. Uh, there is a way to tunnel those inside of a post. Okay. So you say, here's a post because everyone allows posts, but it's really a delete. But uh, <laughs> that's uh, more of an advanced, uh, advanced topic. All right. So let us go and say public void post. This is cool. It's going to take in a product. We talked about this. I talked about this with Maria, this idea of, of model binding that in the old days... You would have to go and say var p equals new product, and then you go p dot this id equals, and you go request uh, dot left right code, and it was we called it left right code, which is basically left equals right, and it was no fun. Yeah, right. And the we idea used a tool was like auto mapper. Yeah, exactly. And you would dig code. You'd say request dot query string, and you'd go digging and oh. digging and digging into the object just to go and put. It. And it was fine for one or two parameters, but it was bad for more. Let's not do that. Let's figure out that they're going to do that automatically. We saw this before. If you take a look at the introduction, how to do bind. Yeah. Right? You can say bind exclude certain fields or include mm -hmm. other fields. We're going to go and we're going to say, hey, products database, <laughs> which is our list, product. So here's the question, though. How do you post a product, right? What does a product look like? Well, they kind of look like JSON, right? So they would be open JSON, close JSON, and then they'd say ID equals, or ID, actually it's JSON, so it would be like this, mm -hmm. and then a comma, and then a name, and then it would be like 4K TV, right? And that would be a bit of JSON right there. You need to say that that's the body, the payload. Yeah, the body of the of the request that's being submitted, right? When we have an HTTP, I'm sorry, an HTML form mm -hmm. that is being submitted, right? When you post with that, yeah. the contents of that are being turned into a, right? A, typically, it's a, a delimited ar string array that right. it's, it's, it's sending it's back. It's kind of URL encoded, but they call it form encoded. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? And then, right, ASP.NET parses that apart and then hands it to our methods here mm -hmm. so that you can interact with that content, but we can now use model binding to just figure out whatever type is being submitted and turn it back into our right. strong typed object. So just like routing was two-way, you can go and say, here's a URL, what object is it? Here's an object and a method, what's a URL look like? Products, we can turn into JSON. Mm -hmm. We can also deserialize it. Yep. You've heard the term serialize and deserialize. It's kind of like that, but I guess they use formatter now. But what you have to do is tell it where the product is. Now, we've done things like this, HTTP post, where we put an uh, attribute on top of post. You can actually also put an attribute on a parameter. Yep. Like from body. And from body says... The parameter should be bound using the request body. It's not coming off the URL. It's not coming from a form post. It's something else. 
Right. That that hint telling it, here's where you need to get this from. Mm -hmm. So let's do some uh, debugging because you love debugging. I do. I'm going to go and breakpoint that and then hit F5. And we're going to launch this one up. And then while that's coming up, I'm going to go and run Postman. Okay. So here's our application starting up here. Here comes Postman. And we're going to post to slash API slash products. It's interesting, don't you think, that we have been reusing that URL. We used it for a get. We used it for details. And now we're going to post to the same thing. But the multi one URL, multiple functions. Right. It is multiple functions, but it's multiple functions because it's answering and responding to each one of those verbs differently. Exactly, exactly. So here, we could go and say, how do we want this data? We want to, we'll go and we'll post the raw text. I'm going to go and format a little JSON here. I just copied that, in fact, from my... Uh, comment there in the code. Not, not amazing. I'm not proud of it, but it happened. Okay. So there's our little bit of JSON. And I'm going to post that. Okay. You know and what? let's see if it works or not. I was going to say, why don't we make that ID something different? You've oh, that's got a good out point. Pardon me. I've been a four before. That'll be a six. Good answer. Good point. All right. And it probably, just to be correct, we'd have to test it to see, but we'll make it like more correct like that too. Is that all right? Looks all right. good to me. Now, we're saying raw. We're going to post it to this location. We changed our verb. I may have forgotten something. We'll see. So let's run the get and see if it landed. No, I don't have to. Look at that. Oh, look at that. So I posted some JSON, but I never said that it was JSON. You're right. Yeah. So we posted some JSON. We did it raw, but under headers here, we said what we would accept. But we did not say, in fact, what the content type was. We didn't include a header that said, this is itself JSON. Postman's really convenient for that. Isn't that nice? Mm. Yeah, it's good stuff. So now we'll hit send. Breakpoint. Breakpoint. There's that, that pause where it's like, uh, is it going to crash or is yeah. it going to work? So now what's our product look like? I like to do this with my products. One of the features that no one uses, and I also like to uh, to say leave little nice little notes to myself in my debug windows. So you can actually pin that there, and that'll stick around uh, for as long as you want, if you like. So yeah, it pulled that information of those name value pairs yep. turned up in there, and then now we're going to go and add a product to that little database. So then if I hit uh, F5, it's an in-memory database. So how long is that going to last? Yeah, as soon as that application restarts, it's gone. Right. So the other thing is that it, you know, it added it to our little tiny database. But uh, did we say that it worked? You know how there's a, a 200, which is OK 200. There's another one that's called 201. Yeah. Which is uh, created, just like we were getting back at 415 there. So we'll say that it worked, and we'll say created at action. That's going to produce a 201 created. Remember, the whole 200 series of uh, codes are OK. The success indicators. Exactly, exactly. But I never you know, can't remember that kind of stuff. So I'll just say, hey, you know that, that get that we just did, the name of that, that particular function, that went and made a new thing. And we'll actually talk about that. We can say it made a new thing. Here's the ID of that. Well, actually, I think we're, aren't we telling it, this is where you can find that yeah. new thing you create. Right, exactly. That's the, it's like, it, it, it's over there, like the location. Yeah. It's it was created. created at, mm -hmm. And it's over there if you want yeah, to go yeah, find yeah. it. Let's do this. Let's go and figure out uh, what, that that, what that turns into. Is that a header or a body or what? Sure. Okay. The response to that post. Exactly. So, right. So, it's saying made it, and now it's over here. Yeah. Is that, and that's why that... Uh, that idea is so important. So let's go and do it again. All right. We'll make a ID number seven. That's going to be a 5K TV. It's even fancier TV than the one we got before. 
So there's the response down there at the bottom. Yeah, let me resize this. The request has created. been fulfilled and resulted in a new resource being created. That's cool. So there's the object. There's the object kind of returning back to us like, yeah, that thing, I got it, it's cool. What do our headers look like? Yeah. There it is, look at the location. Yeah, and it's, and as you said, and it's over here. Yep. Isn't that sweet? Very cool stuff. It's good stuff. Let's do a couple of more uh, quick additions to this uh, because we haven't really validated any of this. We did a little bit of validation for form validation. Yeah, we nearly ran into that problem with the duplicate ID being added. We indeed did. Um, let's take a look at our product and uh, we'll remember that name is required. So we're gonna put on a bit of data annotation. This is part of the exact same stuff and this is what's so great about a unified MVC and a unified web API, right? Yeah. It's you can reuse the same objects and the same data annotations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to say that that name is required. Okay, you can't get away without giving us a name. So back here on our post, before we add, you could go if product dot name and then check the length oh. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, you know, you don't want to do that. No, single source of truth. We're going to say if model state, the state of the model is valid. If it's not valid, freak out. Otherwise, do the stuff that uh, was cool, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say return bad request. What is a bad request? That's a 400. Right, right. That's a way of saying that that didn't work. So let's take a so look. So now, any place that we would need to validate that product object, mm. Is all been has all been centralized around this very simple attribute that you decorated right. the model with. Exactly. One source of truth. So now we'll go in here. We'll add and change the ID, except this time we will conveniently forget the name and post that. Content like zero. There you go. Bad request. There we go. Bad syntax. Cannot be... Uh, fulfilled, but it didn't really tell me why. It didn't let me know why. So I'm, I, I know it was bad, but you know, you've, we've all had that experience when we were working with uh, web APIs where it's like, it didn't work, tell me why. Like, yeah. And you keep posting it and posting it and posting it. What we want to do is we're going to tell that bad request, it has a couple of overloads. One of them is the model state. We could actually pass in the state of the model, the one that we just checked. Let's tell it the model state and see if we can get a little bit more context and uh, maybe a little information because we got to pass on those error messages or something because this is not helping me. We're actually getting back JSON. Nice. Telling us the name of the field and what the problem was with that field. Huh? So name in that case isn't... It is referring to the field name that was missing. Right. Right. Now, certainly, the the shape of the object and how it gets serialized could be different. Right. You know, we could have last name and surname or whatever, but in this case, there's a one to one relationship between those two. Okay. So we've been doing JSON. Why don't we take a moment and add some XML? Why not? Because I like XML. XML made the world go round in. It did. 2001. But uh, some people don't like XML, unfortunately. I'm going to go ahead and do it like this rather than doing it with the NuGet stuff. Notice that when I hit save, we're going to go and... Actually, is... Is it already included as well? No, no. Um, you're adding Microsoft Extensions Configuration. You actually, I think, oh, want... Oh, look at that. Good call. MVC formatters. And that is not included. Oh, that's a great point. Look at you pointing out a great example. Let's go back and confirm what's going on there. You brought up a really interesting point. JSON's more common. common. Yep. So JSON's there by default. Yep. Okay. So what I did is I went and saw blah, 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 dot JSON. Yeah. And went and, you know, figured, yeah, sure. That's cool. I'll just copy paste that. Wasn't thinking. This is actually going to be Microsoft.ASP.NET Core dot mvc.formatters. XML. And look what I did. Dot formatters. I get a bunch of choices here. Dot XML. And we'll go and we'll say uh, 10 for what we're doing here. Although there is a 101 out there in the world. And I'll make sure to add my comma. 
So now I need to tell the system about this. This particular XML formatter came from, as I recall, a thing called WCF. So what I would have done if I needed that would be I'd say dot add XML data contract serializer formatters. A little bit long, maybe more information than I needed. Oh, but that's the that size the, of, of method name that you prefer. I, it is, in fact, what I prefer. And there's a real question is why have we not included ones that long in the past? I'll go ahead and add it to MVC right here. Notice that I changed nothing in products. Yep. I changed nothing in the controller. That's the most important thing to think about. Okay, let's control F5. Come back over here. Go back to do a get and we will go and get one of our tacos, and we say send, and we get back tacos. Okay, that's All JSON. Right. Let's go to the headers and say we don't accept JSON. We accept only XML. All right, so we're giving it a list of what we accept. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that great? Did not have to do anything, but I don't like that it makes me do XML. I insist JSON for all, maybe at least for this particular controller. So I can, if I choose to, be kind of a jerk about it, and I can indicate at the controller level, at the top level, that this in fact produces only application JSON. So now I have locked that one down. Mm. So no matter what you say, yeah. Right? Totally up to you at that point. So, it, to throw back to our previous example where we talked about GIFs, <laughs> where I'm requesting images these, of these things, right. you might not have images of these products, so to re restrict to just that content type mm -hmm. prevents people from requesting GIFs and pictures. Or whatever. Yes. Or any other formatters that I might include. So the point is sure. I could include a whole series of formatters and then just restrict however I like on a controller by controller basis. There you go. All right. So that is a overview of how APIs, web APIs that return JSON or XML or whatever, work on ASP.NET Core 1.0. We'll be right back.